Good evening, everyone. Alderman, before we get going, there's a couple of questions I'd like to ask just by a nod of a head would be sufficient. Generally, no one is allowed on the council floor once the meeting begins. This is a unique situation. We do have the media here. Is there any alderman that objects to the presence of the media on the council floor? Is there anyone? Good, thank you. Also, we have some signs that are in, in the background in the gallery. Normally, we don't allow signs. It doesn't bother me, but if it bothers someone and there's an objection to that, I'll ask them to take them out. Is there any objection to the signs being put behind us? I object. Do you object? Would you please? He's got his attached to his thing. He's got his, oh, never mind. Okay. We're also, we're also going to get started. I'm going to lay some ground rules. There will be order in this meeting. I've spoken to the chief of police. If there is not any order, if there's any heckling, name calling, disruption, you will be escorted out and not be allowed to come back into the chamber, at least for tonight. This is a very sensitive issue, and I, I need the cooperation of everyone that is here tonight. There will be some good discussion, good debate, and then the council will make a decision, and then we'll move on. But it's very important that we don't create disruption, that we don't heckle, that we don't show any disrespect to the alderman or anyone else, and that we conduct ourselves civilly and in good order. I would appreciate your cooperation. Madam City Clerk, would you like to read the quote of the week? Thank you, Mayor. Whenever you do or say something, act as if the entire world were watching. Thank you very much. Call the fifth regular meeting of the Common Council of Order. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll. Boren. Here. Berg. Serta. Davis. Here. Graf. Here. Hannah. Here. Kittleson. Here. Clayunas. Here. Manny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Radke. Here. Ryan. Here. Susha. Here. Vanderweel. Here. And Verhasselt. 16 present. Foreman's present. Now we need to pledge allegiance to the beautiful country we live in. Alderman Sarada, would you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Vice President Serta. Approval of the minutes, President Burke. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I would uh, move to dispense with the reading of the minutes and ask that they be approved as entered on the record. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes stand approved. Resignations, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the letter dated May 17th to the mayor from Claudia Reinbold advising that the She's no longer able to fulfill her position as a member of the Blue Harbor Convention Center Oversight Committee and is uh, resigning from the committee. Thank you. And I'd ask for a motion to accept the file. Move to accept the file. Second. Second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And for appointments uh, stated today's date, I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Metropolitan Law Enforcement Services Study Committee, Alderman Richard Manny, Alderman Silas Vandeweel, James Graven, the account CPA, David Gass, the business leader, Thomas Pitch, labor leader, Larry Samet, school district representative, James Gisha, citizen at large, Jacob Van Dixhorn, county board supervisor, Slant City, Glenn Marcus, county board supervisor, Slant County. The non-voting members are Chief Kirk, Sheriff Helmke, myself, and Carl Bising, the County Corporation Council. The uh, voting members terms are, uh, the aldermanic terms expire 41607, and the citizen members 43007, signed by the mayor. Thank you, those appointments will lie over. Yeah. Uh, Alderperson Daniel Verhassel, 
to be considered for appointment to the Law and Licensing Committee to fill the unexpired term of Alderman Dennis Bauman, whose term expires 4-16-07, signed by the Mayor. President Burke. Yes, thank you, Honor. I ask for a suspension of the rules and that the uh, uh, appointment be put on its passage. Is, is there any objection to suspending the rules? There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Who we'll wants these? The Employee Remuneration Committee, uh, Alderman Richard Manny, Chairman, Alderman Eldon Berg, Vice Chairman, Michael Liveham, Corporate Member, James Botana, an Academic Member, Don Koch, Organized Labor, Greg Wegeman, and Steve Manchin. Uh, the Aldermanic Terms to expire 41607, and the Citizen Members 43007. Thank you. As for a motion to confirm. Move to confirm. Motion and second to confirm. Any discussion? All those in favor state aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And uh, Alderman Jeff Radke to be considered for appointment to the Blue Harbor Resort Convention Center Committee to fill the unexpired term of Alderman uh, Eldon Berg, whose term expires 41607. And Alder Person Gene Kittleson to be considered for appointment to the Special Committee on Risk Management to fill the unexpired term of Alder Person Bonnie Serta, whose term expires 41607, signed by the mayor. Move to confirm. Motion is, is there a second? Second, confirm. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Next item on the agenda is swearing in of all the person Dan Rehassel. Mr. Rehassel, would you please step up? Dan, would you like to come up here, please, and stand between myself and the mayor? Right here. Dan, would you raise your right hand and repeat after me? I, please state your name. I, Dan Verhessel. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially. And will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office of older person. Of the office of older person. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Congratulations, Alderman Rehassel. Now you can vote. <laughs> Public forum, Madam City Clerk. <clears throat> okay, first on the list is Michael Malmberg. Michael, would you please come up to the front? Michael, can I have your home address, please? Yes. Speak to me. Yes, please. 512A North 8th Street. North 8th Street. Apartment 302. Okay. Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Okay, thank Five you. 53. Five, three. Yeah. Okay, one. And Michael, you will have five minutes. All right. Thank you for your audience. First, my government. Teacher taught me to stand up for what I believe in. And I know the situation with the police department being eliminated for the Metropolitan Police Force, but I feel that in instead that I feel that in said that our rights to be safe and protection of our rights would be compromised. And as a result, some people could either have a shotgun under their bed or leave Sheboygan because the right to be safe is a God-given right. And if we can't fulfill these fundamental rights, then how will we be able to live in peace? And I learned that this is one of the ways 
the s system is failing us as the people of city of Sheboygan, and I feel that we should leave the police force intact and that we should consider other options. Back in 95, I was in Milwaukee. I was mugged there. They did not caught the guy. I hope Sheboygan does not become like that. And this is all I have to say for everybody in Sheboygan, either if they oppose or not, that we should understand that we have the basic right to be safe and the basic right to raise our families and the basic right to have our rights protected. And this is a democracy. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Michael. Next on the list would be Delcy Johnson. <laughs> Delcy, I need your home address, please. 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. North 3rd, and you will have five minutes. Thank you. <clears throat> Mayor Perez and members of the council. It is my understanding that the city will need $2.4 million to keep property taxes at a 0% increase this year, due in large part, as I understand it, to the South Pier debt and the escalating costs of employee health care. Finding $2.4 million will require a lot of innovative thinking and bold action. But since your constituents are taxed to the max, and since the money tree, which former Mayor Susha wrote about a couple of years ago, has almost completely dried up, Short of declaring bankruptcy, your options include shared services, contracting out, layoffs, and saying no to all frivolous budget requests. Given the fact that wages and benefits make up 85% of the operating budget, your attention must first be fixed on personnel costs. It is totally unacceptable that city employees pay only 25 to 5% of their health care premiums, while private employees pay 27 to 32%. Indeed, some private sector employees forego family coverage because they can't afford it. I know because I have worked with people like that. It was interesting to read in the Sheboygan Press some of the services that the city and county law enforcement departments share. <laughs> Missing from that list, of course, is a joint emergency dispatch system, which I strongly believe will work if the parties involved want it to work. Added to that list could also be shared purchasing of vehicles and fleet maintenance. There are some things government must do, some things government should do, and some things that are best left to the private sector, which brings us to the matter of outsourcing or contracting out services. Indeed, there are advantages to competition. The first contract service that comes to mind, of course, is garbage collection, which the city could contract for, not unlike sidewalk repairs, which have long been outsourced. There are many other opportunities for outsourcing, such as data processing, payroll administration, debt collection services, utility billing, tree trimming, parking enforcement, housing inspections, vehicle maintenance, building and grounds maintenance, snow plowing, park maintenance, offering savings in personnel costs, as well as equipment purchases and maintenance. Back in 1987, when I was on the council, in a citizen survey that included questions about the privatization of city services, 70% of the 324 respondents favored privatization of building maintenance, snow removal, bus service, ambulance, garbage collection, and park maintenance. Only 8% favored privatizing police services. I am aware, of course, that the council has passed a resolution to create a committee to study contracting for police services with the county. At first blush, this seems like a good idea, because city taxpayers pay almost 40% of the sheriff's budget. But without information, you cannot take a position. So you need to gather the facts before you make a decision. I am aware of a couple of cities in the Los Angeles area that contract with the sheriff's department for police services. 
One is a city of 80,000. They have four full-time and 30 part-time police officers. The other is a city of over 90,000 with 27 full-time and 28 part-time officers. Sheboygan, with a population of 50,000, has 72 officers on the TO with 67 officers presently hired, plus 16 supervisors and two deputies. <clears throat> Sheboygan is a big union town, and while unions were organized to give workers a chance for decent wages and working conditions, union demands have become excessive, with raises exceeding cost of living increases, inflation, and raises in the private sector, and demands for benefits go far beyond what the private sector provides. So we find people moving out of the city to towns and villages with lower taxes. Indeed, I am concerned that 42 percent of city employees choose not to live in the city, and yet they are a large part of the problem. I'm astounded to learn from our Human Resources Department that as of the end of March, 258 city, em city employees live in the city and 185 live outside the city. For example, there are more police officers and supervisors living outside the city than inside the city. There are almost as many firefighters living out of the city as in the city. 48 DPW workers live outside the city, 31 of 66 city employees. The council needs to change this, and there should be no grandfathering. And I say to you police officers and supervisors and firefighters and DPW workers and all city employees who choose to live in the town of Sheboygan or the town of Wilson or the village of Waldo or Howard's Grove, you need to get a job as a police officer or supervisor or firefighter or DPW worker or whatever your job in the town of Sheboygan or the town of Wilson or the village of Waldo or the village of she Howard's Grove and stop feeding off the taxpayers of the city of Sheboygan. If you want to enjoy the Cadillac wages and benefits of a job with the city, Kelsey, you need me. to live in Would the you city. Like an extra minute? Thank you. Thank you. You need to live in the city and share the tax yeah. burden of your excessive demands. Although I'm not a member of the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance, I'm in strong agreement with most of the agenda that Mr. Kepler presented to you, especially, of course, outsourcing and reviewing city wages, salaries, and benefits for all full-time and part-time employees to be in line with the private sector. You have an obligation to your constituents to save tax dollars whenever and however you can by sharing services, outsourcing services, enacting layoffs, and saying no to all unreasonable and unnecessary budget requests. You need to take every possible action in the best interest of your constituents to hold property taxes to a 0% increase. Thank you. Thank you, Dulcie. <clears throat> Next on the list is John Winter. John, can you give me a home address, please? 2213 Broadway Avenue. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of the council and Mr. Mayor, I am here tonight to talk about issues that threaten public safety in Sheboygan regarding the resolution that was brought by six older persons to form a committee to possibly contract with the Sheriff Department and abolishing the Police Department. In that resolution, Wisconsin Act 40 was cited twice as a guideline for this committee to use, and the resolution was passed. This action stirred, up, stirred by the Council stirred up tremendous concern among citizens in Sheboygan. Since that time, hundreds, if not thousands, of citizens have made their voices loud and clear. Citizens organized informational picketing that was attended by hundreds over the past four days. The mayor and older persons have said they have received dozens, even hundreds of emails, phone calls, and letters, and the message was clear, to keep the police department in Sheboygan. I say to all those citizens that got involved, thank you, that's what open government is all about. The police department has, has the same concerns as the citizens. Morale in the department has reached a new low. Members don't know what their future is. Abolishing the police department will put over 130 employees out of work. This includes sworn officers and civilian personnel. It is no wonder that members of the police department feel that some city representatives have turned their backs on the officers that risk their safety to protect the citizens of the city. The second item is that there appears to be an anti-police agenda within city government. The police have been falsely suspected of taking bribes, been called liars on the council floor, falsely accused of having a code of silence. False reports have been made against employees, 
and misleading the public on police issues. In addition, employees have received memos telling them they cannot discuss certain topics with the public. It seems like any time someone from the police department is critical of city government, some type of false accusation is made against that person. I suspect that I am next on that list. On the topic of Act 40, it has been around, it has been around since last September. At that time, Mr. Boren submitted a communications to the PPNS committee suggesting tremendous savings by disbanding the police departments in Sheboygan County. The question I have for all the, all the person Shusha, who chaired the committee at that time, why was this topic held for seven months before it was brought to council? Perhaps it is just an uncomfortable coincidence that this was held until the new council took office and you knew there would be more support on the new council. I believe that this resolution is another attack on the police department. If Act 40, or anything else you want to call it, is still part of the process, it is clear that the intent is to abolish the police department. I have seen all the person Groff's reworked resolution. Words such as Act 40 and contracting have been taken out and replaced with the word sharing. And it still mentions joining forces and combined law enforcement services. So the main theme of the resolution hasn't changed and his new and improved resolution still sounds like Act 40 to me. It still talks about forming a Metro Law Enforcement Committee, while in the same sentence it talks about sharing services. You do not need this new committee if you want to talk about sharing services. Simply reinstate the original shared service committee to get that job done. To have both committees is redundant. The police and sheriff have been recognized as a model in sharing services in the state and we continue to look for new ways to share. Further proof that the reworked resolution hasn't changed comes through a discussion all the person Manny had with an officer. He stated that they are, they are only studying to eliminate the top 5% of the police department. He added that they would write a resolution and that the remaining officers would be, would be able to keep their jobs on the sheriff department and they would not be harmed economically. A couple of key points with this statement. First, it is obvious by his statements that Act 40 is still in play. Second, writing a resolution to protect jobs and wages cannot be guaranteed. This is a Sheriff Department hiring issue, and it is a contractual issue, and it is beyond the control of the Council. Lastly, I believe the voices of the citizens is the most important part of this issue. On May 15th, when the original resolution was brought to Council, a motion was made to suspend the rules. This means that it would be voted on that night. I thought it was such a huge issue regarding safety. Wouldn't it make sense for all older persons to have extra time to get feedback from their constituents? But apparently not. Those that voted to suspend the rules put this on the fast track and at the same time shut out the voice of the people. The mayor cleared up his position by supporting to, clear, to, to keep the police department. I was concerned at the length of time he took to come out and oppose the Act 40, but it is more than I can say for half the council. It appears they still have to have their arms twisted through public outcry to keep Excuse the police me, department in Sheboygan. Would you like an extra minute? Go ahead. You got the attention of the citizens, and they are watching very carefully. The message is clear. The citizens want to keep the police department in the city of Sheboygan. Anything else would be ridiculous. Thank you. Thank you, John. On the list is Wally Ensley. Wally, can you give me your home address, please? 663 River Oaks Drive, Falls. And Mr. you will have five minutes, okay. sir. Okay, Mr. Mayor, Council members, I don't even know where to start. First of all, I'll start with the protection system that's in place in the city. It's three-pronged, fire, police, dispatchers. That's how we operate. All I can say is in my 18 years as a Sheboygan firefighter, never, ever have I seen anything wrong with the police officers. They do an outstanding job. When the Shopko building collapsed, the firefighters and police officers, one person died, unfortunately, two crippled, seven hurt. Then the great flood in Sheboygan came. 
police officers swimming down Union Avenue, abandoned cars, didn't know if anybody was in the cars. It's part of our job. Firefighters swimming, trying to see if someone's in a, in a car. The men and women of the Sheboygan Professional Police Association put their life on the line, just like the firefighters do. That's our job, that's what we're paid for. We might not come home tomorrow, we understand that, but that's our job. Re Act 40, the resolution you're about to vote on tonight, is offensive. It's offensive to the firefighters and it's really offensive to the police officers. When I attend council meetings the past year, I'm appalled at what I see. What I see is, first the police officers are accused of racism. It's investigated, it's not valid, it proves to be false. Then our dispatchers, let's not forget our dispatchers, the lifeline of the police and firefighters. Without them, we can't do our job. They're accused of being discourteous to an elected official. It's investigated, no merit. What's next? Okay, what's next on the shoot? What's next on the shoot? Okay, police officers accused of lying to an elected official about a street closing. Okay, it's gotta be done. How much can they take? Okay, it's gotta be done. Nope. Act 40, let's abolish them. Let's abolish them, then they're done. I, 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 words can't express how I feel. We're paid to protect the citizens of the city, that's what we do. But Act 40, no matter how you sugarcoat it, is simply sugarcoating. It's about, it's not about joint services. It's about abolishing the police department and contracting with the county sheriff for law enforcement. That's what it is. That's what Senator Leibam, who co-authored the bill, said. That's what it's about. Don't sugarcoat it, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. I can't, I don't know how many of you have a priority of public protection and safety. I know the firefighters do and the police officers do. Number one priority, I asked John Winter, President Winter of the Police Department, number one priority is life safety, public protection and safety. It's our number one goal. I can't say, I don't know how many council members tonight think that. I do, knew, I do know two council members that I don't think have that high of a opinion on it, simply for the reasons of a couple comments that were made in the past couple weeks. One older person was asked, what do you think is a priority in the city of Sheboygan? Answer, well, number one is water utility. Number two is the wastewater plant. Number three is garbage collection. Oh, oh yeah, and number four and five, you know, fire and police. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And yet another alderman was asked, what do you think is the most dangerous job in the city of Sheboygan? Well, garbage collector. Garbage collector? Garbage collector? I'm watching these council meetings and I'm going home at night and I'm thinking, did I watch the council meeting? Or was, was I watching an episode of the Twilight Zone? What? Please, please, rescind resolution 40, act 40, the resolution. It's not about shared services. Everybody sitting in the audience knows it. Even the taxpayer alliance knows it. So, I'm proud of the Sheboygan Professional Police Association. I'm proud to work with them, as our union is. We're a team. We're a team. We're a team. And I'm proud to stand up here and say we're a team. And we'll always be a team. We'll keep doing our job, what we're paid to do. Rescind Act 40. This is, this is ridiculous. This is totally ridiculous. While your time's up, do you want an extra minute? Yeah, I'll take another minute. Okay. Just give me another minute. <laughs> I'm thinking of something. <laughs> That's why I never write anything down. So let's go away tonight. I know there's new alderman being seated tonight. He's probably got a lot of phone calls. I know people have been calling, emailing, and they should. This is a serious, serious issue. I, I can't think of anything more serious than public protection and safety. You can't turn the water faucet on, you can't flush the toilet, and you can't take your garbage out if you're hurt. 
So I appreciate it. I appreciate your support of rescinding it. And also, do a roll call vote so the citizens of this community know where you stand on, private, on, on a priority basis. Take a roll call vote. Thanks. Thank you. Last person would be John Berner. John, can I have your home address, please? 1919 Broadway. Oh, okay. And you will have five minutes, sir. There's no way I'm going to top that one. <laughs> no way. No, you talk about uh, joining the county and the police department. It's almost like saying we got four branches of the service, let's make them all one. But all four branches has specif specified things they do. They join together, they share together, but each branch has their special. <coughs> to sit there and say that the police department and the county are alike, they're not. You people in this council had a chance to ride along with the police. You could have asked to ride along with the county and learn a little bit about it. There aren't very many that did it. But now you want to make a decision on it. You know it all. What did you do? Look it up on the internet? I don't think so. This is a very important decision, not only for me, my children, my grandchildren, this whole community. You don't see the village of Kohler going to the county. You don't see Plymouth, Elkhart Lake. We're bigger than them. And you want to take our police department and move it over? It's not going to be the same. I mean, you've got people believing that it's not going to cost the city taxpayers one penny because it's going to be absorbed by everybody in the county is going to pay for our police detect protection through the county. I don't know which one of you is giving out that information, but it's a little false. It's still going to cost the city, but we won't have any say-so in our protection. Marine Corps has a saying, it's called Semper Fi, all is faithful. That's what you people are supposed to be to your constituents, not to one person sitting in front of you. Thank you. Thank you very much and thank you to all the citizens who addressed the council tonight. The next item we will postpone for the next meeting so we can get into the, uh, the bulk of our work tonight. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to um, pull some documents forward, if I may, before we start with the consent agenda. Please do. Um, there are three documents, 539, 540, and 541. All three are resolutions um, awarding the sale of general obligation or taxable general obligation bonds um, and providing a form for the bonds and loving a tax in connections there therewith. There are three different um, three different uh, items and I'll read each one. The first one is a resolution awarding the sale of five million one hundred and fifty five thousand dollars of general obligation refunding bond series two thousand and six C providing the form of the bonds and levying a tax in connection with them. The next one is a resolution awarding the sale of 8575000 taxable general obligation refunding bonds series 2006D, providing the form of the bonds and levying a tax in connection therewith. And the final one is a resolution awarding the sale of $7,150,000 taxable general obligation refunding bond series 2006E, providing the form of the bonds and levying a tax in connection with these. Um, I would move that all three of the resolutions be put upon their passage. 
Excuse me, Mayor. Oh, excuse, uh, excuse me, Alderman Groff. We would need to have three separate votes on those, if you would, please, because they're three separate sales. Okay. Please. Then taking 539. Thank you. I would move that that resolution be put upon its passage. Thank you. Motion and a second. Under discussion. There in case enough. there are any questions, uh, Carol Worth from our uh, financial firm is, is here to answer any questions or to give anybody an overview in case they'd like it, unless I'd like to wait till. Otherwise, the Finance Committee did meet and approved uh, this evening, yes. All three of them? Correct. And uh, is there, let, let's put this one through a vote. Okay. okay, there was a motion and a second? Yes. Please call the roll. Okay. Boren? Hold on. I'm sorry. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I simply wanted to say Carol Worth can explain this very well. So if anyone does have questions, she can make it understandable for you. Thank you. Okay, please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Verhasselt? 16 ayes. Motion carries. Hold and graph. Thank you. Then document 540, which is a resolution awarding the sale of $8,575,000 taxable general obligation refunding bond series 2006D, providing the form of the bonds and levying a tax in connection therewith. I would move that that resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second. Put 540 upon its passage under discussion. Please call the roll. Burke? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the final resolution is 541, a resolution awarding the sale of $7,150,000 taxable general obligation refunding bond series 2006E providing the form of the bonds and levying a tax in connection therewith, I would move that that resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put 541 upon its passage under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clionis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Va excuse me, Verhasselt. Boren aye. and Berg. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Alderman. We need to sign these now. Oh, yes. Please, please allow us a few minutes to sign these documents. Uh, Carol needs to run off. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for bearing us, bearing with us here, uh, Alderman Davis. Thank you, Honorable Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to spend the rules to bring forward document 542 for me immediate action. Is there any agreement? Any uh, objection to suspension? Okay, pull it forward. I'd like to make a motion to put it upon its passage. Yep. Is there a second to that motion? Okay. Who, made the, who made the motion? I'm sorry. Alderman Davis, Alderman Serta, second. We've got a motion and a second to put 542 by Alderman Ryan, repealing resolution number 210607, adopted May 15, 2006, 
which authorized the formation of a Metropolitan Law Enforcement Services Study Committee. Resolution has been made to put it upon this passage. Under discussion. Alderman Ryan. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. It's already been done. It's for discussion it's now. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's already been done. Thank you, Under thank you, Honorable Mayor. Both the Sheboygan Police Department and the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department are exemplary law enforcement providers for our county. Police Chief Dave Kirk and County Sheriff Mike Helmke are true professionals, possessing a high degree of dedication and integrity in serving the citizens of Sheboygan. The officers who serve under these two fine leaders are equally dedicated to serving our community with honor, with fairness, and with pride. The issue at hand this evening is not about one department being better than the other. Sheboygan Police Department has garnered numerous awards in recent years. For example, in 2005, the department's communications electronics technician was named Citizen of the Year. 2005, the Neighbors Against Drugs program is a finalist for the international award of the Herman Goldstein Award for Excellent in Problem-Oriented Policing. 2004, Sir Robert Peel Award from the Wisconsin Associate Association of Community-Oriented Police. 2004, second place in the International Police Vehicle Design Competition. 2004, four offices were awarded the Wisconsin Professional Association Meritorious Award. 2004, the MEG Unit, a shared service with the Sheboygan Police Department and the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department, received the Outstanding Achievement Award for Drug Units. The MEG Unit received the CEASE Award for the most indoor marijuana growing lab seized in 2003. 2003, Wisconsin Professional Police Association Award for Valor was awarded to one of our Sheboygan Police Officers. Sheboygan Police Department should be co commended for these achievements. However, we, the Common Council of the City of Sheboygan, to show our appreciation for the Police Department's exemplary service to our community, have chosen to reward them by forming a Metropolitan Law Enforcement Services Study Committee. Res Resolution 290607 states, and I quote, Wisconsin Act 40 provides for the County Sheriff's Department to provide law enforcement services to municipalities. What the authors of this resolution failed to mention is that Wisconsin Act 40 is an act authorizing, and I quote from Wisconsin Act 40, a city or village to abolish its police department and contract for law enforcement services with the county. To abolish its police department. Somehow these words were conveniently omitted from that resolution. An oversight of this magnitude is not a typographical error. It is intentionally misleading to this council. Abolish. In order to avoid any misunderstanding of its meaning, I looked it up in the Encarta Dictionary. Abolish is a transitive verb. It means to outlaw something, to put an end to, to outlaw our police department. It's rather ironic. Resolution 290607 was presented to this council as a response to the much maligned citizens' budget survey is an opportunity for, quote, for the city to share services and costs by merging the police and sheriff's departments. Services cannot be shared when one of the parties no longer exists. Departments cannot be merged when one has been eliminated, outlawed, abolished. Resolution 290607 failed to inform the council that the true purpose of the Metropolitan Law Enforcement St Services Study Committee is to investigate the feasibility of eliminating the Sheboygan Police Department. It failed to tell us that the honorable officers and dedicated civilian workers of the Sheboygan Police Department would be rewarded for their commendable service to our city through the elimination of their livelihoods. It failed to take into account the impact on the morale of this award-winning law enforcement department. It failed to consider the stress inflicted upon these officers and their families, not knowing if the bills would be paid a few months down the road. The only means we have, as the Common Council, to attempt to make amends for this injustice is to vote to repeal, to rescind Resolution 290607. Those older persons who are opposed to rescinding this resolution 
may stand up tonight and tell us that a re another resolution will be presented later this evening to amend it. They may tell us that this amended resolution will be for exploring shared services, that it will relieve the tax burden on the taxpayer, that the intent of resolution 290607 was never to explore that the Sheboygan Police Department should be eliminated. The upcoming attempt to amend this misguided resolution is not an acceptable solution. Removing the words Wisconsin Act 40 from it and replacing the word contracting with sharing does not change the true intent of this ill-intentioned resolution. It is the same horse of a different color. The Sheboygan Police Department is an indispensable asset to the citizens of Sheboygan and should be respected as such. It is not a tax liability. It is an investment in a secure future for our city, for our children. Resolution 290607 utilized 2005 Wisconsin Act 40, forming the Metropolitan Law Enforcement Services Study Committee to investigate if it is feasible to abolish, to outlaw the Sheboygan Police Department. This resolution was presented to the Common Council in a deliberately misleading manner. I urge every, each and every elder person here tonight to vote your conscience, to respect the opinion of your constituents, to do what is in the best interest for the citizens of the city of Sheboygan. Resolution 290607 does not deserve to be amended. It must be rescinded. Thank you. Alderman Ryan, Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. A big rally in the years that I've been a part of this community here on this floor. We've had three rallies. One was to support the Mall Memorial, one was to save a park, and now tonight keep the police department as a separate entity. It's a lot easier being on that side than this side, I must tell you. Um, and the ralliers are passionate and they truly mean what they say. Of course they mean what they say. But we have to pay attention to their feelings. Their, va their opinions are as valid as ours. Simply because their opinion and some of our opinions are different does not mean we're right, they're wrong, they're right, we're wrong. All of these opinions are valid. And I think we should move forward from that. We must pay attention. Now everybody does care about Sheboygan. The police department does. All of us council members do. Madison made this, um, enacted this thing in good faith. And we as aldermen thought we should look at that. Perhaps we would have found out it was not a good idea. But they were looking at it in good faith. The mayor is working for Sheboygan. We all are working for Sheboygan. Nobody is trying to hurt Sheboygan. No one extra charge we as aldermen do. We must pay attention to the money so that we can meet the paycheck of all of the people who provide services to us. At our public protection and safety meeting, Chief Kirk brought up the information that perhaps it's time to look at dispatch sharing again. In the past, it didn't seem to be very valid. He feels perhaps we should look at it again. And I read in the newspaper, I think it was a newspaper, that Chief Kirk and our mayor perhaps would join together to figure out some ways to approach the county to work on some shared services, perhaps dispatch, perhaps vehicle maintenance, perhaps things that I can't even think of. And whether Alderman Boren's resolution, which was in good faith and not tricky, or Alderman Groff's resolution, which is in good faith and not tricky, or the mayor and the police chief together, which is not tricky. They were all valid, we're all sincere, we're all working together. Whether we go ahead and rescind and start from scratch or amend with Alderman Groff's resolution, 
we need to go forward and see if there is some way we can gather some more money so that we can keep all of our personnel in all areas of the city paid so we can at least keep services as they are. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Alderman Kittleson. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I would just like to make a motion to uh, offer the public if there are any other people who would like to make a few more comments on this, on this issue. We're, we're in the middle of debate. Otherwise, I'd like to make it to maybe one person. Can I do that? But we're in the middle of a debate now, council debate. That's not permissible. So That's Pardon me? That's when you're supposed to do it, correct? Let's, yep. let's, let's finish the council debate, right. and then if, if necessary, if need be, we can okay. come Thank you, though. Mm -hmm. Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, public protection and safety is a priority for the people. They've made that clear to me. Out of the hundreds of people that have contacted me in the last few weeks, five people have been against rescinding this document. We heard tonight through a public forum that the bigger picture is all city employees. And we need to be careful. We need to handle cost-cutting investigation very carefully. If our employees feel that their jobs are at stake, it can affect our community negatively for the next 10 years. Just by forming an investigative committee, it could cause employees to lose their drive and fail to care about their jobs. If we're not careful with measures that we take to cut costs, we could unintentionally cause the citizens to lose their pride in Sheboygan. Once we take away the pride that we all have for the city, there will be no reason to call Sheboygan home. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Manorwheel. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I was going to ask for a privilege to the floor for uh, uh, a constituent that had called in. Um, but if we have to wait, I'll wait till I later. I prefer that we wait. Let's let the alderman speak. Thank you, Alderman Thank Groff. You. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, actually, before I get into my prepared remarks, I just wanted to uh, make a few comments. Uh, I guess I wasn't as fortunate as Alderman Vanderwheelie. I did not receive hundreds of phone calls relating to this issue. But what I did do is I, I looked up the address of everybody who sent me an email and everybody who sent me a, a, a phone message or left uh, or I spoke to on the phone, and there were only two people that I could not identify where they were from. And it was pretty similar. It reflected pretty much what we heard earlier tonight in regards to half of the employees that live basically in the city and half the employees out. And that's exactly what I found with the correspondences I received. Half of the correspondences came from people who are not paying property taxes, not living in the city. And I would bet that if you had everybody here that is not uh, from the city, uh, living in the city uh, boundaries, if you had them leave the city hall, uh, there'd be plenty of seating for the actual citizens that are here this evening. So I just want to put it in perspective that not everybody that is in attendance actually are taxpaying citizens. My objective as an alderman is to maintain or improve the current level of services at a lower cost to the taxpayers. Under the current system, city property owners pay 100% for the Sheboygan Police Department and about 40% for the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department. If we maintain the status quo and do everything in 2007 as we did in 2006, we are about $2 million short in the city budget. In order to balance the 2007 budget, we will probably have to lay people off. To prevent this from happening, we need to start doing things different, excuse me, differently. We need to gather the facts, lay them on the table, and make well-informed decisions. When you are facing a $2 million shortfall, you can't make emotional decisions. A wise man told me when I started chairing the Public Protection and Safety Committee last year that I would be faced with some difficult issues. He advised me to take the emotions out of the decision and look at the facts. This good advice came from our police chief, Kirk, and I want to thank him for sharing his wisdom with me. I would like the alderman to take this advice. Once you take the emotion out of this resolution, you will see that we are only trying to obtain information. Why should we be forbidden from analyzing the data? When you look at the city's table of organization, you will see that the aldermen and the mayor are at the top. What's missing from the table of organization is that there are 50,000 citizens above us that we report to. We know that the demographics in our community are changing as the baby boomers continue to retire. In a few years, we will have more people pulling from the Social Security system than paying into it. 
as we have more citizens facing the rising cost of gasoline for their car, the increase in the price of natural gas to heat their homes, the rising cost for prescription drugs, the last thing I want to do is hit them with a $2 million increase in the city budget just to maintain the status quo. Over the next few months, the Salary and Grievance Committee will be looking at various areas on the city's table of organization that might be conducive to privatization. If it can be proven that the current level of service can be maintained or improved at a lower cost, I will support these measures of privatization. I'm not sure whether the mayor and my fellow aldermen will do what they will do if uninformed, disgruntled employees decide to protest. I would like to ask the aldermen not to support rescinding the resolution that was passed, which formed a law enforcement study group. This group consists of professionals in the community who are willing to look at Act 40. Act 40 does not just abolish a police department. This is an inaccurate and misleading statement. Sheboygan will always have law enforcement coverage. The sentence in Act 40, Act 40 that is being misrepresented states, a city may abolish its police department if it enters into a contract with the county for the county sheriff to provide law enforcement services in all parts of the city. There are not any provisions in this law that would prevent a city with 50,000 people from looking into this issue. The assumption is that we would have terrible law enforcement services if we contract with the sheriff. The Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department, along with the Sheboygan Police Department, helped make Sheboygan metropolitan area the fifth safest area in the United States of America. <coughs> this is huge, fifth safest in the United States of America. Under Act 40, the overwhelming majority of these respected Sheboygan police officers would be absorbed into the county law enforcement union and their pensions would stay intact. At this point in time, I have more questions about Act 40 than I have answers for. What if we would have officers, what if we would have more officers on the street by contracting with the county for less money? How much would we save by contracting county employees who pay 10% towards their health insurance plus a deductible compared to our current system where employees only contribute 2.5% to their health insurance and they don't have any deductible in their health insurance plan. How much would we save if there were one maintenance facility for law enforcement vehicles compared to two? What would happen if there were one dispatch center? Would there be fewer middle management positions? My questions could go on all night. If you do not allow this well-designed study group to do their job and analyze the pros and cons of this concept, it will be taken up at the next Shared Service Committee meeting, which is scheduled for June 22nd. Vote no to this motion to rescind, and let's let the well-designed Law Enforcement Committee do their job and study this issue. Perhaps once the information is available, the concept could go to the public for a referendum so we would know what the real taxpayers of this city really want. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mayor Perez. Uh, I don't have any prepared notes, and I agree with, with much of what all the persons okay, has me mentioned. Hannah, there's a little disruption here, Ms. Wade. Thank you, sir. Please proceed. I believe that this issue should have been addressed at the Shared Services Committee level. This is everything that all the person Susha has brought up. It's a legitimate area for the Shared Services Committee to be working on. And I think you chair the Shared Services Committee. Or it should have been dealt with. These are, none of this needs to be done through a special committee. If you don't, if we don't like the members of the Shared Services Committee and we prefer the new team to be on it, so be it. There was no need to form a new group. We had, the, we had it in place. If you want new players, if, they were, if the past committee wasn't working up to our standards, let's move forward. I don't see why we needed to bring Act 40 into this. These are shared service issues and they should be dealt with professionally. I was, I was delighted to hear that, that Chief Kirk and you are gonna uh, move forward and share ideas and, and I'm sure Sheriff Helmke is gonna be involved there too. Uh, let's rescind this. Let's assign a task to the Shared Services Committee and move on. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Alderman Davis, sir, did you hit your button? 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the whole intent of that resolution to form the committee was uh, Act 40 was cited, which is the uh, uh, contracting with the Sheriff's Department for police coverage here and elimination of the jobs. One of the criteria for Act 40, and it's on the last page, is that all, all union contracts have to have expired. Therefore, you know, once you are, the contracts have expired, you can eliminate those jobs. Sole intent was to eliminate jobs, the police, the police uh, department job, the police positions, the supervisory positions. That's the whole intent. It, a timeline was presented. The timeline that was presented included the union expiration of their contract. If it wasn't, if it wasn't intended to eliminate those jobs, why was that timeline included in, in the uh, in the discussion? Now, this council hasn't hasn't rescinded anything for a, quite a long while here, eight or nine months. This this resolution needs to be rescinded, and I fully support it. And I hope that this council members will do that. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Davis. Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to clarify tonight and make myself very clear that um, I have heard the concerns of the citizens and that their concerns have not fallen on deaf ears. And by making myself clear is that there's a t lot of talk about shared services and dialogue. And when I cast my vote tonight, it is one that says under no circumstances whatsoever would we disband our police department and compromise the value of our city's safety. Um, so we can do all the talking we want to. And I, I have to give credit to our departments because we have been doing that in the past. You can talk to um, Chief Kirk, you can do a ride along, you can go through Citizen Academy and you will find out the many shared services that we already have. But by casting my vote again, I reiterate that by doing so, I am standing for what I truly believe in the citizens that have come out in numbers and saying under no circumstances whatsoever do we want to do that. Before we allow, okay, we've got, uh, I'd, I'd want to speak, Elmer Grove. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, oh, first of all, when um, Alderman Ryan was uh, giving his um, presentation, uh, he kept saying uh, 2906 07 is 2106 07 is reduction. And um, uh, as I told him earlier in the, in the meeting, um, he mentioned a, a horse of a different color, and I told him I didn't even have one horse, much less two. But on that being said, uh, looking at, at the existing shared services committee that we have, um, you'll notice it hasn't met for probably three years, I think it was. And a lot of that was because it flip-flopped from year to year, um, one year being um, county controlled, one year being city controlled. And every year, what had to be done was that they, um, they uh, elected a new uh, president or chairperson of that committee and vice chairperson, and that was never done. And so it sat there without any job to do. And because of that, I, um, I looked at it and I said, okay, the, the uh, resolution that was drafted uh, included a committee that I think would do a very good job of looking at shared services, of looking at everything that we need to do. And I feel very strongly that my resolution that I brought in amending the original resolution would be the better choice because we do have the committee in place. Tonight it was appointed. We're waiting till our next meeting to, to um, actually appoint that committee and I think it needs to be done. Therefore, at this time I would move that uh, the resolution repealing uh, resolution 2106-07 be placed on file. A motion and a second to put the resolution on file under discussion. I would like to speak. I hope, I hope that the alderman who voted before, uh, if you will recall, it was a seven to eight vote with Alderman Danver Hassel not being sworn in yet. It was a close vote to create the committee in the first place. When you have such a close vote, it generally sends a pretty strong message, not only to this council, but to the community. 
And that message is that it's a very sensitive issue. We have an issue here before us that is, in my opinion, at this point, threatening the existence of our police department. I cannot support that. I am asking every alderman who voted in favor of creating the committee in the, in the first place to change their mind. Filing this document is not the answer. We need to rescind it and be responsive to the community, listen to the people. They've spoken loud enough. I've heard it. I've had numerous emails, numerous phone calls. I've been stopped everywhere I've gone, and people have approached me and asked, please, Mr. Mayor, do not eliminate the police department. We simply cannot do that. The police department is an, is an extreme, integral part of what Sheboygan is all about and the quality of life that we enjoy. It is a huge percentage of our mere existence I have worked hard with Chief Kirk to combat crime, to combat drug trafficking and the illegal use of drugs. A lot of what I do is not known to the public, and that's okay. If the public doesn't know how the Chief and I work closely together, that's okay. I know in my heart that I have been a strong supporter of the police department. And when this comes before us in a threatening way, and my position is, no, I do not support it. Rescinding, rescinding this resolution will send a strong message to our police force, to our community, who depend, who rely on public safety and the officers that are sworn to protect them. For us to do anything that threatens that in any way is wrong. We should not be doing that. A lot of us have deep convictions, commitments to no taxation, no further taxation. A lot of us stand for a lot of different things. That's why you get elected, because people see the diversity of strength and energy and commitment in each and every one of you. There's 16 of you, and all together, collectively, you bring together a pretty powerful force in this community. But there comes a time, and there's been other times before, when these people speak and say, please, don't. And my advice to you is don't. I do not support filing the document. I would ask that you vote it down and vote to rescind it. Let's move forward. And I also ask, because we have 16 aldermen and about 32 county supervisors, that gives you 48 people that need to come together and meet mentally and emotionally and agree to do something. To me, it would be more appropriate to have the chief of police and his staff and myself administratively work down, put together a plan that will address specific, very specific detail items that we can address as a, as a, as a, uh, a city with respect to shared services. That has been done before. We've already done that. Shared services is not a new concept. People talk about it like it's the best thing to slice bread and we just learned about it yesterday. It's not. It's been around for more than 20 years. It takes willing parties. But we've had all our department heads, either at one time or another or more than once, meet with our counterparts or their counterparts in the county and they've discussed ideas on how to approach shared services. At some point, Shared services, and that, that concept of shared services is not going to mean anything anymore because we will have moved forward in, in such a positive direction that we will have accomplished pretty much everything. And there won't be that finality to, to shared services. So it doesn't do us any good to keep pushing something unless there's the other side is willing. And I think that if Chief Kirk and I work together and put together some ideas for you, bring them to the council for your consideration, maybe that's the best way to start, and then if the council wants to go a different direction, you're free to do so. In summation, please vote no against filing it and vote yes to rescind. Thank you. Alderman Barnes, sir. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, first of all, I want to say it's a sad day in Sheboygan when aldermen have to fear for their personal safety to come to a meeting. Very much offended by that. No, 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 second, no. Second, no, please. second, let me get to my point, please. Uh, I am, this has been a, uh, it's going to be a very difficult decision for me. It has been. And I just made up my mind this afternoon. I make no apologies for Act, Act 40 whatsoever. And the input and the phone calls and the emails that I've gotten from the police department and the fire department mean absolutely nothing in my decision. What does make, what, what finally made up my mind this afternoon was that the majority of the people that I heard of not affiliated with the police department or the fire department, my constituents, constituents throughout the city uh, have told me that I should step back. And that's what I've decided to do, and I'm going to support Alderman Ryan. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Alderman Kajunas, Kajunas. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is a difficult issue, and uh, I too have heard from many constituents and many people not in my district but in the city. Uh, and I think we're, um, I hope we're going to be ready to do our homework sometime. I don't think we're ready to do our homework tonight. Um, I do pledge, uh, as an older person, to work diligently to communicate with the city. I think one of the issues that's at hand here is misinformation or half information or poor information. And I don't know how we can get across to the city what goes on, what decisions are made, why they're made, what information we have to go by. Uh, there's just a lot of hearsay, <coughs> gossip, um, all sorts of innuendos that you have to uh, sort through to hear what people are saying sometimes. And I think that's the fault of all of us here as older persons. How well are we educating? And how well is the system of uh, the city council educating people as to what is on our desk. Um, we're just, it looks like we're just filing papers, for, you know, shuffling papers. There's a lot to it. And uh, I don't take it lightly, this job. And I wish somehow citizens who were interested, I know there's a website, things like that. But um, I think press coverage isn't good. I think radio coverage isn't good. And people get a lot of information from that for some reason or other. That's where they get it from. They're not necessarily studying too hard. Somehow we have to make that information more accessible, more understandable, so that we can move ahead. And it's not a big mystery that somehow we're working together, learning together, studying together, and not being suspicious of each other. Thank you, Alderman Clayjunas. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Your words were impressive. Alderman Bourne, your words were impressive. Alderman Klein Yunus, your words were impressive. And so was everybody else's. I think Alderman Klein Yunus, you're right. Lots of misinformation is out for whatever reason. Alderman Bourne, I think you're right. You step back, let's start over, let's try anew. Your Honor, I think it would be a wonderful idea for you and the chief and whomever else is necessary to gather some information. And I think that idea of bringing it back to the council is good. My one su suggestion is, if you're going to look at dispatch, and that's what the chief had suggested at the PPNS meeting, we need somebody that knows about unions, because that will come into it. And cooperation is not shared services. Shared services means it's going to save the county some money, and it's going to save us some money. Simply cooperating is cooperation, which is a lot laudable. But that is not shared services. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Uh, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to see uh, the Shared Service Committee uh, be comprised of the individuals that I, that I recommended for the, uh, the committee under Act 40. I think it's a diversified group. Uh, I think it's, it's a group that uh, has everybody, as I said when I was talking about Act 40, had a place at the table that was interested uh, in, in, the, uh, in the discussion. 
and with shared services, I think to keep the focus maybe, and I'm not criticizing the aldermen of the county board supervisors, but I think with those people on that committee, it will keep its focus. I'd even like to see a timeline on it, whatever, whatever the timeline would be, but I would like to see that committee move forward and get something done. Uh, I understand that Manitowoc and Fond du Lac County, I believe, have gone to a single dispatch. I think they would be re good resources for how it, how it was done and how uh, the concerns were handled of when the system goes down. There has to be technology to get that done. That's always been the argument in the past. Uh, so again, I would like to see somehow, either through resolution or whatever needs to be done to see the people that I wanted on that committee to be on shared services. I just think it's for the good of the community. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Alderman Boren, Your Honor, we're supposed to be discussing whether we should file this or not. And the board is, should take other discussion. We should have a vote on that. We will, sir. Alderman Hanna on the file. Anyone else? Motion to file. There's been a motion and a second to file. Please call the roll. An I vote would be to file this resolution. Davis. No. Grav. Aye. H Hannah. No. Kittleson. No. Clayunis. No. Manny. No. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. No. Radke. No. Ryan. No. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. No. Verhasselt. Boren? No. Berg? No. And Serta? No. Three ayes, 13 noes. Motion fails on the motion to rescind. Please call the roll. An aye vote being to rescind, a no vote being not to rescind. And that's the motion by Alderman Ryan. I will read it to you. Oh, by Alderman Ryan, repealing resolution number 210607, adopted May 15, 2006 which authorized the formation of a Metropolitan Law Enforcement Services Study Committee, and I vote will, will uh, re rescind it. I'm sorry. There's people. Busting. Yes, okay. I see them. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you again, Your Honor. I will vote to rescind. If we don't get something accomplished, I'll bring the resolution in next time. Thank you. Alderman Hanna, did you wish to say something, sir? When yes, I did. Uh, I please, that, please, right? Yes. I think I thought the motion was from Gene Davis. I'm sorry. Yes, but the, the author is Alderman Ryan. OK. Thank the you. motion is made by Alderman Davis, <coughs> but the authorship is re refers to Alderman Ryan. Chief Kirk? Mr. Mayor, can I say a few words before you vote? Yes, please, Chief. Chief Kirk is the department head. We don't need to open the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Common Council. There's been some lively discussion here tonight. I wish there was more before you voted, so I'm glad you recognized me to allow a few words. If you go back to the quotation, which our city clerk read tonight, I'll make it brief because you've read it. <clears throat> Act as though the entire world is watching because southeastern Wisconsin is watching. I wish to say thank you to several groups of people here today. I wish to say thank you, uh, first off, to the citizens who have come out, to the citizens who have called you, the alderman, who have called my office, the mayor's office. They are speaking out on a very, very important issue tonight that you are debating. I wish to say thank you to the, all, I mean, to the uh, employees, not only the police department employees, but all city hall employees, for g gathering together, speaking as one, speaking of the concerns that this issue has uh, brought in front of us tonight. I've heard my name being cited several times tonight. I, I, I wish to say thank you. I wish to just exp expound on some of those issues. Uh, Alderman Sushi, you're absolutely right. I did talk to you about trying to keep emotions out of issues. Let's deal with the facts. Let's try to determine what the real fact is behind it. Don't deal with something on an emission, emotional basis because you normally make the wrong decision. So as I, I sat here and as I heard the first resolution as was brought up and they talked about Act 40, I knew immediately what was going on here. I needed some clarification. I spoke to some of you aldermen about the clarification. As some of you are speaking here tonight, clarity is needed. 
clarification is needed. What is this about? Is it about shared services or is it about Act 40? If in fact you bring in Act 40, it brings in the abolishment of a local police department. Alderman Ryan, I wish to say thank you for those awards that you, you let others know about because very, very often we don't speak probably enough about ourselves and let the public know what we've been awarded and or what we've been doing. <clears throat> Second, there was an issue talking about joint dispatch. For those who haven't been around for a while and for those who don't understand about joint dispatch, about the shared services committee, in the year 2000 to 2001, we spent about a year and a half studying joint dispatch. We had the, the city of Sheboygan and the county of Sheboygan paid 50-50 for Alert and Associates to study joint dispatch. We then, the city of Sheboygan Police Department along with the uh, Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department then studied joint dispatch and we came up and made a presentation to our, our uh, shared services committee at that time. On September 27, 2001, it came to final resolution at that time. At that time, September 27, 2001, the resolution that was handed down by our Shared Services Committee was that the issue of shared or joint dispatch would not be furthered. It was not broken. Dispatch was not broken by us. It was not broken by the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department. It did not need to be fixed according to what some of the guidelines set down by Alert and Associates were. And one was, and the, probably the most disturbing issue that I had was, with it was that it was pushing for the creation of a separate joint dispatch facility in the area of $1 million. It wasn't broken to the issue of $1 million. Alderman Montemayor, you're absolutely right. Joint dispatch should be a topic of discussion when the new police department is built. However, as we look at this, this is a very, very huge issue. I believe it should be rescinded. The resolution that was initially filed or put forth and was passed should be rescinded. I think that there is a shared services committee. In fact, June 22nd, it's having a meeting. If it already has a meeting, that means it's been activated once again. This is a huge issue. And when we got involved, when the citizens got involved in this, they needed clarification. I needed clarification, and that was what the public information efforts were all about. I will give Alderman Boren a lot of credit. He came to my office and we discussed this issue. I give you a lot of credit for speaking here tonight and saying what, uh, what your beliefs are, what your stand is going to be. I would ask once again, this effort be rescinded. We are an excellent organization. We have excellent efforts that's forthcoming. We've been awarded uh, various awards. Our officers have been awarded various awards, our employees. And as the governor, before this meeting here tonight, the governor was in front of City Hall. He spoke to those that were present here tonight showing support and wanted clarity. He spoke of the excellent organization that we have. I worked with our governor's office on an assortment of issues. He came here, he cared enough tonight to speak on the excellence that this city has in its police department and in its employees. Please, I would ask that before you vote, you take into consideration some of these thoughts of the statements and efforts by our governor to come to our city hall tonight to speak to those who have showed uh, tonight in support of us and to ask for clarity. Please, we will. I will always explore and implement shared services when it produces better efficiency, more effectiveness, it provides the same or better product, and it must save money. So there, we have been looking at shared services. If there's any other issues that need to be thrown on the table and discussed, we are certainly willing. I am willing to sit down, be it with the mayor's office, or be it with some committee to look at shared services. So once again, I wish to say thank you very much, and I'm very, very proud of the members of my police department. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I too agree with almost everybody that has spoken here tonight. Um, there has been a lot of misinformation, a lot of fear in the community, and um, the way this thing has played out is, is not what we had expected. Um, this was just a fact-finding committee. We were just looking for information so we could make an intelligent decision 
bring it to the community, tell them what we found, and let the community decide what they wanted to do with it. But seeing that this has grown legs, um, I feel I am doing a disservice to my constituents by not exploring this issue any further. But I'm not going to be like my predecessor and ignore the people that have contacted me. And because I know what it's like to be ignored. So I will support the rescinding of this and hopefully we can continue on the right path and look for different ways to work with the county and share some services and actually do it, not just talk about it. Thank you. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just want to clarify for everybody that basically we have two options. If we rescind this document, then the shared service committee, which consists of three aldermen and three county board supervisors, will be looking at shared services and Act 40. Or if this is not rescinded, Act 40 would be going to a special committee that was designed to represent labor. It's got um, ex officio members of the police chief, the sheriff, the co corporate council of the county, our council, and business leaders. Um, you've got a well-formed committee that could look at this and analyze it. People mostly who are not elected officials. But it sounds like this group wants to rescind this motion and let the shared service committee look at it. And that's okay with me. If that's what everybody here wants to do, I'm sure that Alderperson Graf, Alderperson Vanderweele, and myself, who sits on the Shared Service Committee, would be more than happy to look at this with the three county supervisors. So if you rescind this, this issue will be going to the Shared Service Committee. If you do not rescind it, it will be going to a special neutral committee that will be able to look at one specific thing and it, it, it would come out with, I think, uh, a better received result. Even if the goal is to just inform the public, I have a feeling if it came from this committee, it would be better received than if it comes from the Shared Service Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Alma Susha. I, um, I get criticized uh, pretty frequently lately but I get criticized if I'm too open, too forceful with the council in making my recommendations. I get criticized if I'm, if I'm not. Uh, I've learned to live with that. But in response to the possibility of Act 40 hitting the floor again, as far as I'm concerned, Act 40 is out of the picture. I will. dig my heels in and make sure it stays out of the picture. We're not going to deal with Act 40. If we're going to talk about shared services, we're going to talk about shared services. Act 40 is not about shared services. It's out of the picture. And I can get criticized for that. I'll accept it. But I will be forceful about that. Alderman Manny. On Thank the you, Your Honor. Yeah. Uh, simply by way of observation, I think if we have an issue and discussion it seems to be clearly uh, representing quite divided opinions. We would be uh, serving ourselves and the city well to refer it to the Committee of the Whole, not for action, but for exploration and discussion. If we had done that with this resolution, we wouldn't be here tonight with this uh, perspective on the whole thing. Uh, it would have been an educational venture for the council and citizens and committee heads to our heads could have been a part of that as necessary. It would have been a powerful educational venue. This would not have been necessary. So for future reference, uh, that is my strong recommendation. Thank you, Alderman Matty. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I believe the, the, this issue, I'm glad to hear that uh, Wisconsin Act 40 is dead, number one. Uh, but I believe that, that possibly if the Shared Services Committee, as it stands right now, uh, with three county board members and with three alder persons is not effective in dealing and creating uh, a discussion of true shared services that possibly 
uh, the, the, uh, this committee uh, maybe needs some, some new appointments if, if, if it's not functional as it is. Um, I, I do believe that uh, Alderman Boren's resolution, his structure of the committee um, is a well-balanced committee. And uh, possibly in the future, this could be explored in a, a resolution to possibly have that committee act as a true shared services committee, the structure of it. I don't know about the appointments to it at this time, but the structure that he has is a well-balanced committee. And possibly that should be our shared services committee. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Van Reel. Thank you, Your Honor. I agree with Alderman Ryan completely. And I would ask you if we could work together and come up with a committee for shared services by the next council meeting, because I think everybody in this room agrees that it, that committee that's in existence right now could be tweaked. So I ask you if, if we could look at that and maybe bring something in for the next council. I will look at it, I won't guarantee you. <laughs> Alderman Davis. Uh, thank you, Honorable Mayor. I call for a question, please. Call for a question. Second. All those in favor of the call in the question, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Please call roll. <clears throat> for call, do you want to roll for the final document? A roll call on uh, rescinding. Yes. And I vote will be to repeal this resolution. Groff? No. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. 14 eyes, two no's. Motion carries. Is the public in the gallery planning to stay here? Otherwise, I'm gonna ask for a five minute recess. Are you planning to stay here or leave? Generally, when the issue is over, people leave. Are you staying here? Okay, as long as, as long as it's not a huge up. Okay, we'll just hesitate while everybody leaves and wants to leave. We'll just hesitate. Okay, I'll ask for a motion for, excuse me. I'll ask for a motion to recess for five minutes. All in favor? Aye. We stand recess. Okay, I'd ask for a motion to reconvene. Second. Motion second. All those in favor of reconvene, state aye. aye. Any opposed? We stand reconvened. Oh, yes. Please call the roll for presence. Boren? Here. Berg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Aye. No, just here. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Graf? Here. Hannah? Here. Kittleson, Here. Clionis, Here. Manny, Here. Meyer, Here. Montemayor, Here. Radke, Here. Ryan, Here. Susha, Here. Vanderweel, Here. and Verhasselt. Here. 16 here. Quorum is present. President Byrne. 
Yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. On the consent agenda, I move to uh, accept and follow our C's, approve and adopt all our rolls, and pass all resolutions. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Under discussion. Alderman Susha. Um, thank you. I'd like to, uh, I have a question on 514, and I'd like a separate vote on 516. Please, 514, please ask. Um, this is relating to um, the police liaison program, and it, it is a very good program that has worked very well as a joint venture with uh, the city and also the school district. But I know last year when this issue came up, uh, there was questions about how our budget works and the school board budget works and things. And I'm, I was just surprised to see a five-year contract, and I'm wondering if we have the power to bind future councils. Attorney McLean, please sponsor. Uh, yeah, it'd be my opinion if you end its contract you entered into it, uh, you would be binding the council for five years, yeah. yeah. And uh, you'd like a separate vote on 516? Yes. Excuse me, Yes. I couldn't hear Attorney McLean, would you please repeat? I don't know if my microphone's on. It's on. Was it? I just indicated, yes, it would be a contract for five years that would be binding upon the city. Okay. I think we have one more question here. Alderman Groff, sir, you have a question? Yes, on, on 514 also, regarding that five-year term, I'm, I'm, I believe the document said it was $340,000 split between the two entities. Is there a clause in there that as that increases from year to year, it will still remain at 50% or is there a um, an escalating clause in, for the amount of monies that um, are going to be charged or not. Because I'm, I'm a firm believer that the school board or the school district should be paying more because they use them probably nine months out of the year, whereas we use them three months out of the year. So, Thank you, Alderman Groff. Alderman Vanderwill is chairman. Would you please answer that? Thank you, Honor. Uh, actually, Chief Kirk, if he's here, or one of his representatives, would probably be able to answer that better than myself. Uh, Deputy Chief Weiss, please, sir. Thank you, Alban Vanderwiel. Thank you, Mayor, uh, Council Members. My understanding of that contract, it was 50%. So if it remains at 50% of the salary, school pays for uh, four officers, 50% of the costs. 50% is 50%, so if the officer's wages go up or down, 50% uh, still remains the same. So that was my understanding that it was half. Any other questions for Deputy Chief Weiss? Alderman Matty. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Just a simple question along that line. It looked like it was locked into dollars as opposed to 50% for five years of the salary. We were locked into dollars. It's that question of escalator, how, how does that happen? Are we stuck? Or are we simply committed to a contract, which I support, that's half of remuneration and settled with the city units? I guess all I can comment on is how we've done it in the past. And in the past, they picked up 50%. So if that isn't specifically stated that way, then maybe it has to be uh, modified. But that's traditionally, that's what we've done. Uh, Deputy Chief Weiss is right. 50% is 50% of whether it's a. Uh, uh, a, a number or a percentage of, of salary as, as it moves up or down, so he's correct. Alderman Horan. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Deputy Chief Weiss, could you just give me a breakdown of where the officers are now, what schools and how many there are? Some people at home may not know that either, and I don't. Yes, there's, uh, there's uh, four officers. Uh, Officer Dan Maurer is the senior officer, and he is at, uh, I'm sorry, he's at uh, North High. Uh, officer uh, Lockwood uh, is at, uh, I believe it's at uh, Farnsworth. Thank you, thank you. Uh, there's four officers. Let's see, Officer uh, Tim Patton is at South High. Thank you. And uh, we have uh, Officer Terry Meyer splits his uh, time between uh, Urban and uh, uh, I believe it's uh, Farnsworth. 
Thank you. Thank you. Just follow up. Please do, Alderman Warren. Thank you again, Mr. Your Honor. Uh, now, with this contract, with that dollar amount, uh, not that I'm looking to spend more money, but does that lock us into that number of officers? Or let's say, for example, if there was a need demonstrated, would we be able to open this up again during the five years to possibly provide another officer or officers if it was in the budget and there was a need demonstrated? Or are we, are we locked into four with this five-year contract? Well, uh, without actually looking at the words in the contract, it appears that we would be locked in for four officers for a period of five years. Mm -hmm. uh, any modifications, uh, you know, would, would have to be, you know, a separate, uh, say for instance, uh, we're having a lot of problems at, uh, at Strive, and uh, say for instance, they required, they wanted to have an officer, and they came before the council and proposed the package whereby they would uh, pay for 50% of salary and officer, that'd be a decision you have to make at that time. Okay, thank you. Anything else, Attorney McLean? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I, I would just clarify, I, I don't have a copy of the contract with me here either. I know our office in the past has drafted it up and it's been drafted up historically as an annual contract and I was requested to do it for a longer term and it could well be that, that there was a dollar amount in there uh, and I think if the intent is that it be 50%, perhaps that could be uh, indicated in the resolution here. And if need be, I could look at the contract language tomorrow and uh, make that clear in the document uh, as opposed to being locked into a fixed dollar amount for a five-year term, which probably isn't going to be realistic. Okay. Alderman. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would suggest if, or perhaps, um, Attorney McLean should look at that and, and make any changes if necessary to, so it does reflect 50% for sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Deputy Chief. That's the explanation. Uh, 516 with uh, Alderman Vanderweel. I'd ask for a motion to put that uh, to accept and adopt the reporting committee. I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, accept and adopt the report committee and uh, approve the general ordinance number 30607. Second. A motion and a second. Under discussion? Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, what this document is, or under discussion, okay, what this document is doing is basically removing the stoplights at the intersection of 8th and Erie. And a couple of weeks ago, we heard from the um, uh, Deputy Director of Public Works, and he assured us verbally that there were going to be the wires under the ground in case in the future they find that the four-way stop is not working and that we would be able to resurrect, uh, re-resurrect the stoplights. And I just would like to have that in writing as part of this. So I would like to make a motion to amend this document stating the Public Works Department is authorized and directed and the Deputy Director of Public Works will be held accountable to ensure there is proper wiring under the intersection of 8th and Erie to facilitate any future needs for traffic signals. <coughs> the motion the second. Under discussion, the amendment. I think it's a, it's a wise amendment. That'll, that'll <coughs> cover that. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask uh, if Tom Bolton, if that is a common practice when they do intersections, do they put the wiring underneath the intersections for future uh, possibility of uh, traffic lights and things. Mr. Holton, would you please approach the podium. Thank you, Your Honor. Council, typically when we do intersection, we'll put, if we have reasonable belief there'll be signals uh, or any kind of uh, stop signs that have lights on in the future, we do put conduits underneath. Uh, the pavement, so you don't have to dig up the pavement again. We put pull boxes in, so that's already in the plans. It's part of the bid package to do it. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Holton. Okay, on the amendment. Please, we don't, no? We don't need to vote. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Now we need a motion to approve the resolution as amended. So, 
Motion and a second. Under discussion as amended. There being none, do you need a roll call on that? Yep. Please call the roll. Born? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Cleunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Verhasselt? 16 ayes. Motion carries. On the balance of the consent agenda, 5-1 through 5-17, with the exception of the one you just voted on, please call the roll. Oh, I'm sorry. All in one my <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Um, does anyone else smell smoke? Yeah. You smell smoke? It could be from the windows. I think. Okay. I don't. It's not smelling smoke. Okay. Somebody must be grilling out late. <laughs> I'm sure there's enough people out there to okay. watch. Thank All you right. for pointing that yeah. out. So. <laughs> okay. Please yes. call the roll. Uh, Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Cleunas. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. and Bourne. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 518 through 519 to be referred. Report of officers 2, 520 by the city attorney submitting a copy of the decision of the Wisconsin Court of Appeals District 2 in the matter of Poole versus the city of Sheboygan. President Berg. Yes, I move that uh, we accept and file the communication. Second. Motion and second to accept and file under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 521 lies over until July 17th. Please make that notation. 522 through 537 to be referred. Resolutions introduce three. 538 by Alderman Groff, authorizing the city attorney to file a petition to review the Court of Appeals decision in Poole versus City of Sheboygan. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd move that that resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put uh, resolution 5 38 upon its passage under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 39, 40, 41, and 42 have been dealt with. 5-43 by Alderman Ryan, approving the terms and conditions of the contract for lease of land and accompanying ground lease between the Redevelopment Authority and LJM Architect Incorporated. Alderman Ryan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I move to uh, suspend the rules. Is there any objection to suspend the rules? There being none, please proceed, sir. Um, the, this is for the Islander building. Make the, a motion to put the resolution upon his passage. Oh, make a motion to put the resolution upon his passage. Second. There's a second. Okay, under discussion. Alderman. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is uh, the Islander building, which is going up in the South Pier District. Uh, LJM Architects is building it, and the, the president that, of that organization, Eric Jensen, actually would like to begin construction on this tomorrow. Uh, this is a standard uh, uh, lease document has been done on the other pier, uh, other properties on the South Pier District. And uh, I, I believe that uh, I request that uh, it uh, be approved this evening. Very good. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Any other discussion? Alderman Susha. Um, just for the viewing audience, I'm wondering if somebody could um, give us a little rundown of what the Islander building is all about. Sure. Uh, Ms. Enders, Paulette, please come to the podium. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mayor and Common Council. The Islander is, um, as Alder Person had mentioned before, that it's L an LJM project, Eric Jensen, and it's two shops. It's a shanty building in the shanty village portion of South Pier District. And it's, I think what he's, I don't know that he's officially announced to his tenants are two tenants. I know that one is a cafe. I think the other is a flower shop. Any other questions for Ms. Enders? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. There is no further discussion. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Cleunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. 
Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. And Serta? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries 5-44, 5-45 to be referred. Report of Committee 6, 5-46, by law and licensing, recommended denying beverage operator's license number 7060, based on failure to cooperate with the committee and failure to reveal all violations. Alderman Ratti. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion we accept the report of committee. Second. Second. Is there is a party here tonight? Under discussion. Uh, Sandra Henderson here this evening. Sandra Henderson. Not here this evening. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Any further discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Report of Committee 7, 547, um, yes, 547 to be referred. Ordinance introduced 10, 548 to be referred. Matters laid over 9, 4 73, and RO number 360607 by the city clerk submitting a report from the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce Convention and Visitors Bureau for the 2005 activities. President Berg. Uh, yes, I move to accept and file the document. Okay. Motion and second to accept the, and file under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 452, resolution number 220607 by Alderman Berg creating a naming rights committee to study and identify opportunities for naming rights, sponsorships, gifts, and support for special projects, purchase equipment, and other such activities which will aid the city of Sheboygan to maintain and improve the quality of life for its citizens. President Berg. Yes, yeah, second, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put resolution 452 upon its passage under discussion. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Under discussion, I think this parallels activities that have been uh, taking place in the school district, the university center, etc. And I think it uh, allows us to move from being uh, reactive to active by uh, looking very closely at the kinds of opportunities and activities we can uh, highlight and hopefully involve the state planners, folks uh, who really care for and love Sheboygan, and provide them with some opportunities to participate uh, in the further growth of our city, especially in terms of the areas of quality of life. I think naming rights have been very successful in the school district, and I think we can find a number of opportunities ranging from such uh, opportunities as buying a brick uh, down at the marina for a certain cost to larger uh, opportunities. For example, if somebody wanted to put a carousel in Fulton Park. I happen to have uh, found one for about a half million dollars, and I'd be more than pleased to uh, name it after anybody who'd be uh, willing to uh, uh, give us the money so we could put a carousel in the park. Uh, and this would be, I guess, an opportunity such as that. Thank oh, you. Oh, the man is handing you his wallet. Yeah. <laughs> Please note it's empty. <laughs> Alderman Hanna. Uh, thank you, Mayor Perez. I've got some experience with this in, in, with the school board and with the Public Education Foundation. Uh, and I think what we're going to find is that the citizens, the corporate citizens and the individual citizens of Sheboygan are going to blow away our ex expectations. Uh, this, we have a remarkably generous community. Uh, and I think this is appropriate that we're going to give them the opportunity to help. Because uh, folks are out there and they do want to help. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I was going to comment that I'm sure we will be, we will be secure in knowing that it, it won't be Wally's whiskey or something. But then I know that the Director of Public Works, City, Director of City Development, and two aldermen are not going to make any of those kind of decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, being Chairman of Public Action and Safety, I just have to mention because it's been uh, People have talked with me quite a bit about cameras and parks, and this would be a perfect area where we can maybe raise some money for cameras and parks and might take precedence over a carousel. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Very good, Alderman Vanderbilt, Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm gonna take this opportunity to say I do endorse this fully, and I, by the way, if anybody is interested, I do have a water feature available over in Nathan, Wisconsin. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And we'll ask all those people to watch and please make notation of that, correct? Yes. Very good, sir. Anything else? 
There being none, please call the roll. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. And Davis? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 453 resolution number 230607 by Alderman Graf, Hannah, Susha, Boren, and Clayunas authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2006 budget. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. That resolution, along with resolution 240607, which is also a resolution to authorize the transfer of appropriations in the 2006 budget, I would move that both resolutions be put upon their passage. Motion to second to put 453 and 54 upon their passage under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law. Uh, is it the wish of the council to forward these to the committees or they all pertain to, or would somebody like to make a motion to file? You want to move them forward? I move. Alderman Montemayo. I make a motion to file. Second. Which ones? Which are we one? talking? There's a bunch of them. Let's see. The, uh, Anything to do with the police? Correct. Anything? 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 Yes, please. So we would be looking at 549. Five, uh, 51. 551, go ahead and you call. All right, and then we'd be using um, 552, 553, 553, 554, 555, 55, and 6, 6. and 7, 57, 58, 59, and that's it. Yes, please. Armour Kittleson, you're okay with that, ma'am? I'm Six, sorry. 61. 61 also? Okay. Alderman so, Kittleson, are you okay with that? Be in the, Alderman Kittleson. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. That means you're, we're filing these, they're not going to the committee at There's all? There's no need for There's it. There's no it's need for it. It's been taken okay, care of. Good. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Vanderweel, did you wish to speak, sir? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Some confusion in the beginning. Uh, 551 should be included in that, correct? Yes. And then 549 should not be, because that is... Separate oh, right. Issue. I'm sorry. 549 should not be. 549. Right. Something different. Okay. So we got everything except 49, 50, and 60, correct? Yes. Everybody got that? There's a motion. President Burke, do you wish to speak? No? There was a motion and a second to file all those documents. I'm and sorry, I get who did make the motion to file all these? Alderman Kittleson? Alderman Montemayor. And? Who second? Second. Thank okay. you. There's a second. Okay. Please call the roll. No, you don't want eyes. Anybody want a roll call? All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Motion carries. Okay. So then, 549 will go to public protection and safety. 550 uh, doesn't say where that's going. We need to pass it tonight. Uh, I need uh, President Berg. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I move to accept and adopt the report of officer and move uh, the application on its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 560 will go to Public Works. Other matters? Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. 562 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Kathy Krieger submitting the email she sent Mayor Perez stating that it's not in the city's best interest for our police department to be merged with the sheriff's department. Anybody want to make a motion to file that one too? Second. Motion to second to file. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 563 is a communication from Mary Zarafanitis suggesting that we renegotiate for the North 23rd Street site for our new police station and providing facts and figures regarding this issue. That will go to building use. 564 is a communication from Lawrence Fouts questioning why we are looking at getting rid of the police department. If there's, this is about shared services, then why Act 40? That's for a motion to file. Second. Second. Discussion? All those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 
565 is a communication from Mike Malmberg stating his concerns with dismantling the police department. Second. Motion second to follow under discussion. All those in, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 566 is a communication from Dr. Jack Westfall stating that there are four important and related issues to consider in merging services between the police and sheriff's department and listing those reasons. You want that one filed too or want it to go? Motion second to file under discussion. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 567 is a communication from Sue Krause stating that disbanding the police department would be a big mistake and we need to do what we can to support the department. Motion second to file under discussion. All those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 568 is communication from Patricia and Kevin Nihus, 1303 Maryland Avenue, stating their concerns about the parking and status of Maryland Avenue between 13th and 14th, and asking that this be put back to a two-way street. It goes to public protection and safety. 569 is a resolution authorizing entering into an agreement for engineering services for seawall design and field quality control testing at 23, excuse me, 239, 339 Pennsylvania Avenue. That goes to public works. 570 is an ordinance to lower starting pay for future non-represented employees who are hired by the city of Sheboygan. It goes to salary and grievances. 571 is a resolution directing a public hearing to be held in connection with change of the city's official zoning map for property located at 1117 and 1123 North 27th Street and 1118 and 1212 North 26th Street. Alderman Kittleson. I'd like to make a motion, to, or I'd like to suspend the rules on this. Is there any objection to suspension? There being none, please proceed. And I'd like to make a motion to put upon its, uh, to put upon its passage. There a second? Like to put second. Under discussion. Under discussion. This is a, um, uh, oh, the Smith Gardens. No, I was just, never mind. <laughs> okay. And that's uh, located, I believe, on Kohler Memorial. All those in favor, say aye. Say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 572 is an application for an amendment of the official zoning map of the city for Grigorsky Development, LLC, for property located at 1117 and 1123 North 27th Street, and 1118 and 1126 North 26th Street. It goes to pub, uh, city planning. 573 is an ordinance amending the city of Sheboygan official zoning map of the Sheboygan zoning ordinance to change the use district classification of the property located at 1117 and 1123 North 27th Street from class MR mixed residential to class SO suburban office classification. That goes to city plan. Motion second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Stand adjourned. Good night everyone.
with the exception of 18.3. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Second. Under discussion, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like item 18.6 uh, referred back to finance so we can obtain a legal opinion before we vote on this. 18.6 will be referred back to finance. Anything else, Alderman? There being none, please call the roll. Deberg. Aye. Eberg, Serta, Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Racky, Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. and Bauman. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 1814 through 1816, except 1815, will be referred back to public work, except 1815 will be referred to public protection and safety and public works. Reports of officers to 1817 by City Plan Commission recommending mm -hmm. amending the text of the zoning ordinance so as to increase the permit fee for a driveway permit from 25 to $35. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the report of officer and pass the ordinance. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion, Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, with the increase of these fees that are taking place, could you please tell me, is this money going back into the, gen uh, this money going into the general fund or where with this extra $10, does it go to, where is it going? The, these fees, per, uh, permit fees go to the general fund, yes. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? <clears throat> please call the roll. Eberg. Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Graf, Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Montemayor, Radke, Sigali, Stefan, Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Aye. and Deberg. 16 ayes. Motion carries. <clears throat> 1818 lies over. 1819 through 1822 to be referred. Resolutions introduced 3, 1823 by Alderman Susha requesting the Sheboygan County Board and or the appropriate county board committee to consider lowering the speed limit on County Highway OK from Wheaton Creek Road to 500 feet south of Riverdale Avenue from 45 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. A motion and a second. Under discussion. <clears throat> Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just would like to inform the public that we had that speed limit um, from 55 down, put down to 45, and at the time that we had done this, and this was even before I became older person, we were fighting because I lived in that area concerning all the accidents and that, and fighting to have something done in Weedon Creek and okay. And um, the county at that time refused to bring it down to 35. They said they were willing to do the 45, but they did not want to do the 35, so I'm hoping that um, this resolution will help, but at that time, it, it, they wouldn't do it. So, as long as you're aware of that. Thank, Thank you, Alderman Sigali. And I will add under discussion that I plan to have some discussions with the county officials about that to see if we can once and for all deal with this issue to the safety of the community. Thank you. Any other comments, discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Radke, Sigali, Stefan, Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Deberg, and Eberg. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1824 to 1828 lies over. 1829 to 1831 to be referred. Report of Committee 6. By law and license, 1832, by law and licensing, recommending denying taxi cab drivers license number 6959 based on failure to cooperate with the committee and failure to reveal all violations. Alderman Manning. Thank you, Your Honor. On behalf of the committee, I move that we accept and adopt the report of the committee. There's a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. 